Am I Sorry, lost? you broke up there, Natalie. We're well, live. So welcome back to another episode of the Tackle Box, which is what we've decided to call it, because we're going to tackle a whole lot of issues. <laughs> uh, this is episode four, I believe. Yep. So I'm Natalie. I'm Robert Brockway, and this is our guest for today, Rob Sorry. Tiller. This is our guest today, Rob Tiller. Rob, do you want to introduce yourself? Of course, Rob could hear us be fine when we were testing earlier. Can you hear us, Rob? Oh, no. It was working <laughs> perfectly when we tested it over, uh, over the last 15 or 20 minutes. My signal. <laughs> no worries at all. While Rob's testing his signal, I'll just give a quick rundown of what we're going to talk about today. Of course, uh, in Australia. Oh, hey, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks for... Yeah, I can, I can hear you. My my signal is... It's, uh, my phone is possessed by artificial intelligence. That uh, The timing was perfect. It was about a minute after around. we started. No <laughs> problems. Lovely place. I'm trying to spot where he's not lagging. What was that? Sorry, Natalie. I'm trying to spot where where he's not lagging. Has yeah. anybody had any doubt that we don't go live? Please, <laughs> please. Can you hear me now? Yes, you still you are for you are sort of freezing a little bit. Okay. Well, it says I've got three bars. Sorry, guys, this is embarrassing. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it was funny how it was. We were talking away for about twenty minutes uh, before uh, we were live, and there was no oh, yeah, problem. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. my phone is possessed by the Apple devil. <laughs> um, so, Rob, do you want to introduce yourself? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you fine. But I'm worried you can't hear us. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm a I'm a counselor. I um I work a lot with with men. Um men going through separation. I work a lot with couples. I've been doing this for about 15 years. Um, yeah, I have, I have a lot of, uh, sympathy for men's situation at the moment, uh, in terms of, you know, yeah, doing it hard in a lot of different, uh, aspects of their lives. And, uh, that's pretty much me in a nutshell, professionally anyway. I'm from Texas. That's where my accent's from. <laughs> but you're, um, you've settled in Australia, haven't you? So I'm a, I'm a cowboy settled in Perth. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> yes. So tonight, or well, this afternoon, for those in Perth, we're uh, we're going to be um, talking about Brittany Higgins, who's been in the in the Australian media quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so Brittany has made an allegation that she was raped in Parliament House. And this has caused, uh, it's really set off a political firestorm in, uh, in, in, in Australia. So it may not be, I don't know if it's, it's, it's widely reported overseas, but, for the, but certainly in Australia, uh, this is all over the media at the moment. And we're learning uh, more and more every day. So we thought we would get together, and have a chat about it tonight. Let's do it. Let's do okay. it. Okay, so for, just for tonight, <clears throat> Rob Till is going to be Rob. Robert, you're going to be Robert. Sounds good. So keep us straight, Natalie. <laughs> that's right. I thought I'd start by giving a quick rundown of uh, what, uh, of, of essentially some of the dates involved. So uh, apparently, well, Brittany Higgins was uh, was working for um, a, a minister here in Australia, a government minister. And have been working there for about four weeks, and uh, as reported in the media, she has uh, taken a taxi. She was apparently it was quite late. She said she was she was quite drunk, 
uh, wanted to go home. Uh, she took a taxi with uh, with another staff member who um, apparently lived in a similar direction. They were going to sort of just share the, the cost of the taxi. And she did this some she's then ended up at Parliament House. So she's saying she expected to go home. She turned up at Parliament House where they both worked. Uh, they've gone into the building. He had his ID apparently and was able to sign her in as a guest. She went then uh, they, they both then went into uh, an office where. She was actually Reynolds working. Office. That's right, exactly. It's not clear whether he was working in the same office. It was in, in, um, in that's right, in, in I think Senator Reynolds' office. Um, this was this was the twenty second of March, twenty nineteen. So it was a Friday night, and they've been in the office uh, for a while. Then uh, until the well, they've been there together until the early hours of Saturday, the twenty third. Now. Um, the the male staff member who hasn't been publicly identified left in the early hours of the 23rd the saturday uh and security guards who of course knew they were in the knew she was still in the building have checked in on her in the morning and reportedly found her in a state of partial undress uh, in the office and uh, that has kicked off a, a disciplinary hearing on the monday uh she i believe she was then she then attended a meeting now it, when I first read her about the reports, I believe the report said that, that she made a disclosure during the second meeting uh, that, uh, that that she'd been raped. But it seems that, uh, at least in the more recent reports, seem to be suggesting that might have been the first meeting. So it's, it's a bit unclear to me which of those yeah. two are the case. Anyway, she's made an out. She's, she's subject to a disciplinary hearing and has made an allegation that she's been raped by the uh, by the male staff. And set the Liberal Party on fire. Absolutely. So the the male staff member was uh, then resigned. Was encouraged to resign. Not anything to do with. So the they allegation. weren't. They weren't. They weren't on a date night then. Absolutely not. No. 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 They'd been to work function apparently, and uh, they got. I said she thought. She said she thought she was going home and, and ended up at Parliament House, and then um, then they've gone into the office and spent some time there. And then, uh, yeah, and she's still been in. He's left, and she's still been there in the morning. That's that so that much. Everyone seems to agree on. Okay. Yep. And um, she's been subject. To, he he has actually um, been encouraged to resign. Nothing to do with an allegation of, of rape or sexual assault. Rather, apparently, even going into the building after hours in the manner that they did was enough for, to get him uh, basically to ask to leave. So he's left that day. Uh, she's been then subject to disciplinary, disciplinary here, which then raised the allegation of rape. Okay. But so then it wasn't a, it wasn't a date night, and they were sharing a cab together, coming back from a work function. Exactly. Neither one of them were supposed to be in the building. But exactly. He had they had a no reason. Card, yeah. and they were both. You know, degrees of intoxicated. It sounds like that's right. Exactly, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So Brittany Higgins has stated later, quite a bit later, that um, that uh, she's woken up to find him on top of her raping her. That's, I believe, the allegation she then made at the disciplinary hearing. Whether that was on Monday or a couple of days later, it isn't clear to me. But um, she was reportedly encouraged to uh, approach the police about this. The police did discuss the matter with her informally, but she declined to make a formal complaint. So at that point, the police is the hands why? of the police. Why, did, why didn't she make a formal complaint? So the media reports state that she said she was worried about her job, that if she did make a formal complaint, that she might lose her job. Okay. Well, I, you know, it sounds like a grown-up decision. Mm, I, I tend to think. I mean, we're seeing a we're seeing a, a media firestorm at the moment, and I, I suspect had she made the complaint at the time, we would have seen the same media firestorm. And I just don't sure. see how I don't see how she could have been fired. So, in fact, that so I don't see how her job would ever be so That's my opinion. So now. Significant. What do you think, Natalie? <clears throat> there, there is 
from what from things I've read and seen, as a female, it's not the a. My heart wants to believe it. it it's it's yeah. got nothing to do with that. But my brain's saying something else, it, and it's not saying something else that I don't believe it. I just got questions. So when she apparently woke up and he was raping her or sexually assaulting her and she apparently said at least six times for him to stop but he didn't when yeah when the security guard found her after he'd left a why didn't she call the security guard then b when the security guard did find her why didn't she say call the police i was raped then the other part that I've read and seen in an interview was where she turned up to Monday to work on the Monday, like nothing had happened, and he wouldn't even look at her. And it's like, why did you go to work? If you were just raped and sexually assaulted, how could you go to work and face this man like, if it was me, if I did go to work the next day, I would choke him. I would go yeah. for the throat. Not saying it's right thing, but I just I couldn't just go to work and go. Okay, I've got to do my normal routine now. It's Monday. Mm -hmm. Now, because I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, you think it'd be quite a traumatizing experience. Yeah, I just there's just not. It's it's not that I don't believe her. It's just as a female, I don't understand her actions after the those three days after the event. And of course, yeah. now a, a, a formal police complaint is being made two years after the event, nearly two years after the event, uh, with no, as far as I'm aware, no physical evidence. So. Hmm. Um, the the officers were cleaned on the Saturday afternoon because there was no knowledge, uh, there was no allegation that any um, any uh, complaint, any sort of criminal activity had been uh, you know uh, complained about. So, the, the, therefore, if there was a crime scene there, it was inadvertently destroyed by the cleaners without them ever yeah. knowing. Um, the Australian Federal Police investigated and found that the cleaners and, and everyone involved in that clean were completely in the clear because there was no suggestion that a crime had been committed. And I, at one stage a few days ago, or maybe even last week, I mean, they were making out like that was part of some conspiracy to cover it up, you know, that they had the cleaners in. But I was imagining that the cleaners cleaned that place, you know. Exactly. That, from their perspective, from the perspective of the people who manage the infrastructure, a couple of people have been found in the office, in a, half drunk. Who knows what they've been yeah, up to? Yeah. At that. I mean, that, would, that, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be a... That wouldn't be a you know, a, a one-off kind of scene, I would imagine. No, exactly, and it, it's an it's a it's a it's an office from a high-ranking official in Australia in the Australian government. So obviously, they're going to want to make sure that it's in a good state of repair when everyone comes to work on Monday morning. That seems quite reasonable. Right. To me, especially. <laughs> right. Be different that if someone made a complaint that nobody had at that stage. Yeah. So if there was physical evidence of a crime, it's long gone. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm laughing about other you know uh, characters who might have you know used their position historically to you know wow some you know some lady into you know hey you want to have a go in the in the minister's office kind of thing as a bit of a you know a thrill yeah. sales pitch yeah <laughs> but I mean it, you know I guess it uh, you know. Because I mean, they would have this place would be covered in in CCTV cameras, you know, and you can you can you can kind of determine a degree of drunkness by how somebody moves and walks. Mm. Um, so the fact that they got out of a car and or a cab, and then they they proceeded to uh, this office together, walking, um, mm. you know, it 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 kind of um points to a level of 
some you know some consciousness exactly so so she claims that she could barely sign her own name but as far as i know she got into the office under her own steam she wasn't carried in the office so um she signed her name in being cognizant so that of that part, that part doesn't kind of hold water then you know that, that 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 was the question mark that i that that struck me it's like okay well i mean he didn't drag her fred flintstone style into this office they walked in no. it together that's my understanding exactly that and i don't think the i mean i think the there were security guards there at the time when they signed in so um there would have been quite a lot of evidence if, if he if he just really dragged her into the office so um no as far as i understand it uh he they both walked into the office even even if they were a bit right. inebriated but, yeah i, I uh, mean whoever was what go ahead his Natalie. Pass. he had his pass and she right. had to be signed in as a guest Exactly. That's my understanding. So, if if she was, if either of them were that Shit far face. gone, they wouldn't have been able to get in. Yeah, that's right. Right. Exactly. They wouldn't be allowed in my office, let alone Parliament House. Mm. This is an extremely secure environment. That's right. And they knew where they well, were in the building. That's what I was thinking. I mean, it's like you just can't stumble into this place, and I can imagine they're. There's 24-7 security guys watching multiple TVs in a room. You know, that's their only job is just to keep an eye on the place. And they're, you know, they're probably giggling behind, you know, behind the TVs. Well, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know, <that's, laughs> you know, because like, they knew what was going on. In yeah. fact, one of the reasons why they both got in trouble for being in the office, apparently, is the uh, fact the sensitive material in the office. So there's a who knows what sort of material right, being kept in the right. office. And, uh, and so, of course, this is a highly secure environment, probably one of the most, most secure places in the entire building, in fact. Yeah, right. So since... So, the, so, since then, so then, I mean, you know, so then she, according to her story, they would have had to get into the office. Um, you know, she was able to communicate at least clearly enough with the security guards uh to get to get into the building in the first place um which means she had a level you know of, of cognizance about her and then they get into this office together apparent you know assumingly they are off off the cameras at that stage so they're not not visible anymore and then and then you know then she's claiming she woke up under him and told him to stop um so when did she go to sleep? Yeah, she said she fell asleep on the couch at some point after going into the office. I'm not sure how long. Uh, I'm not sure she, anyone said actually how long it was between the time they went into the office and the time that she claimed this occurred and that he then left. That she fell I mean, asleep, that's right. That, yeah. That's another part I don't understand. If you, were, if you were conscious enough to know that you're that drunk and that tired from mm. another um interview i saw they said that they because they lived in the same area they would share this cab and mm -hmm. he said he just has to drop by the office for a minute and she thought it was a bit strange if you're that tired where as soon as you get upstairs you go you just fall asleep on the lounge mm -hmm. would you sort of say i'll drop you off at the office i'll i'm catching the cab home i'm too drunk and too tired why or why get out of the cab why not have the cab wait for him as he runs in and gets what he has to get mm -hmm. to physically get out of the cab and go into the office mm -hmm. it does again it, to, i'm sitting on the fence that just the things that she her actions to me just don't add up to where i think there's just too many well, it's holes. Not, it, it, it's not. It, it's not going to hold water in court. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's two years later. Where it's it's going to be his word against hers. So my concern it's is be circumstantial and hearsay. Hearsay, basically. But my concern is it's so political now that he can't well, get a fair trial in this country. Yeah, because of the, it's 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 it because it's now gone all the way to the prime minister. Um, and I'm really concerned. I think that just speaking only from what's 
publicly the information is publicly available this as far as i can tell there was no there's no physical evidence at all because by the time the complaint was made first raised there was there was uh no time there was all the physical evidence was gone uh there must be a dearth of evidence uh and yet with the pol- with the political involvement i'm really concerned about whether you get a fair trial and whether he, we might see a conviction anyway yeah 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 i mean i you know he'll he'll hire good lawyers and i mean you know they can't they can't They can't rewrite the law in terms of how you know the legal process. You know, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, that's not my worry. I, I guess you know they're using it as a sledgehammer against the liberals at the moment, and they're implicating all these different characters. You know, at the highest levels of power in the country, is complicit in in this situation, in this scene, and 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 we're talking about a grown woman. You know, she was 22 when this happened. So this was 2019. And mm-hmm. I mean, it's not, you know, so it's Me Too was well and truly uh, established. And, you know, and, and women all over the world have been telling their stories and being, you know, given given space, you know, to, to share and being encouraged and being celebrated as a result of it. So, I mean, I, I find it hard to stomach that, that she was encouraged to go to the police. She went to the police. She didn't press charges because she's afraid of losing her job. That, it, that, I'm just not, I'm having a hard time buying that. Mm-hmm. Believe all women. <laughs> the problem, of course, What's is, that? yeah. Is it well, believe all no, women? No, it's not. It's, so. that, that's, but that's, but it's not, you know, you've got, you got, Andrew O'Keefe, that game show host for Seven, who's who was in a few newspaper articles. But have you heard have you heard the story break on ABC or SBS? Have they they've been keeping exactly. everybody up to date with with what's been going on? He was charged with domestic violence. I mean, this guy was one of the the premier ambassadors for White Ribbon, yep. who you know who's been director. charged with with domestic violence and you hear in crickets in the media yeah exactly well that's because the they, because they put because he's on the right side of politics meaning mm-hmm. he's you know in america he'd be considered a liberal he'd be considered on the left and mm-hmm. and same in america the media protects you mm-hmm. yeah what i was getting at is when i said believe all women was that this is the mantra that's that um that we've been seeing from from uh, i mean the london metropolitan police actually effectively had that as a policy for a long time although they have actually repealed that recently um but yeah there is there is just an assumption that um that um that that uh these these statements are correct but i think really uh, it's important that there's judicial independence and that he gets if it goes to court that he, if he gets that he gets a fair day in court uh, i am concerned about biases in the court and political influence on the court and i think this will be a real test of the australian uh, court system in 2021 of the independence of australian courts well, today I, you know i agree i hope you know i hope he gets a fair trial too i mean i i don't mm-hmm. i don't know why he wouldn't and i mean i think they're going to be and i think that's why because they're 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 trying him in the court of public opinion mm. because right. he's not he, because they're not going to convict him. They're not going to convict him in court. Well, I certainly hope not. In the sense that um, that I'm concerned Sorry, about guys, the, I'm just plugging in. Are you right? In the sense that I'm concerned about the level of evidence that would be presented in this case um, based on public reports. Right. What do you think? What do you think, Natalie? As I said, it's one of those things where in your heart you, you truly do want to believe her, but... Why? Why? That just doesn't make sense to me. It's yeah, like, uh, you know... We, you don't want something to be wor- horrible things like this. Like this is the most disgusting thing that could happen to a woman, and to make it up, it is... You ruin it for every every other woman that's gone through it. I agree. Makes it harder. I agree. I mean, if he did it, if he raped her, 
and mm-hmm. and and that's what the evidence shows. I mean, the guy deserves to get his balls cut off, in my opinion. But of course, but, yeah, but if he, but if he didn't, if he's guilty, if it was consensual, or mm-hmm. if it was some, you know, some version of some blurry version of consensual, where it's mm-hmm. like, well, okay, why? Like you said, Robert, why you, why you, why did you get out of the cab? Why'd you go in the building? If you're, if you're, um, I mean, and and I know this is all, this all falls under victim blaming, but you know, sorry. I mean, I, I work with couples. I work with people who, you know, if you, you know, in a, in a, in a couple's relationship, if, if one partner is not telling the truth or if they're blurring reality or if they're messing with their partner's mind and you don't address that as their counselor, if you don't call out um, what's going on in the, in, in, in terms of how they're mucking with the reality of the situation, um, mm-hmm. then, then nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to get better. And, mm-hmm. and I think there's, there's some, there's some holes in this, in this woman's story and and i think it sounds to me i mean i've certainly been wondering who got to her who got to her at what stage and said hey sit on this and Mm -hmm. let's you know let's wait there's you know there's an election coming up you know it sounds like there's been some strat some political strategy going on and then bang the second person shows up the third person shows up the fourth person shows up all and it's like you know q on cue and that's and, right. and that's and then all of the 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 quote unquote journalists on tv are just parroting the same script you know the believe all women you know scott and 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 morrison messed up when he apologized in my opinion he should have just said you know i didn't know anything about it if it happened it's dreadful um mm-hmm. But that's for the courts to decide. I got nothing to do with it. And he should have left it there, in my opinion. No, I tend to agree. But unfortunately, I think politicians these days, they see that there's a large body of, uh, there's a large sort of movement that will- Of opportunity. <laughs> afraid it'll go against them if they, if they don't come out and say something. But then he, was, he came out and he was criticised for the things he said anyway. Like when he- Exactly. Talked, talked, well, if you apologise, you're basically just, you know, you're admitting guilt and then they're going to chop your head off. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, that's what. But that's I mean, what we. And that, that's the problem I've got with, you know, all the political correctness that's being built in, you know, to the media and and being transmitted through, you know, every avenue. It's you know, it's worse in America, but you know the the winds are blowing in this direction, and it's going to get worse here. Yeah. But I, you know, I think I think you know, I mean, the answer is just let the courts decide. Exactly, and, but 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 they're bringing it out to weaponize it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what are the things we always? There you go. You go um, considering this was two staffers, it wasn't anybody um, who were. It wasn't anybody with a title per se. Mm. Um. If touch wood, so I he, got... Re- he, was, he was a staffer too. Yeah, yes, so they're both staffers. So if I got raped, touch wood... So define if I staffer for me. What's a staffer? It's Sorry, It's not Natalie. going to... It's just somebody that works within the government. It's not... They haven't got a title. So, yeah, they're not the... Yeah, they're not the governor of this or they're not the... Peon, a peon, basically. That. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty much what it amounts to. Yeah. Right. Um, it's not going to hit the news. It's going to it might hit the local news. It might hit this sort of news. To say that it's not what's happened is political. It is too essentially, and I don't mean this in a degrading way. It's essentially two nobodies. Yeah, it just happened to work in Parliament House. Mm-hmm. Now I work. Yeah, I work in a for a big company. If if that happened between, if I was raped by a, a male staff member, it might get around the company, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't 
become newsworthy. It's just that it's Parliament House. Yeah, if it's just because it's Parliament House, then what's the difference between me getting raped in the big company I work in and Parliament House? It's got nothing to do with the Prime Minister. It's got nothing to do with the ministers. It's got nothing to do with whatever title you hold. It's between these two staffers just because it happened in Parliament House. It had nothing to do with security breaching. They got disciplined for the security breach. That's right. Right. Exactly. Um, so why, fact, really, why, why is it political? Why I think the is it Higgins, and getting slapped on the back of the hand for something okay. that it's actually essentially got nothing to do with him? I just want just want to clarify something. Um, the male staff member got got disciplined for uh, for entering after hours, and that he was advised to leave. Uh, I gather I gather that they avoided firing him so he could go get think, go get another job. My understanding is that uh, there was a disciplinary process against Brittany Higgins, but when she made the allegation of rape, that process halted. I don't believe she was ever. Ah. Um, I don't believe she was ever punished for um, for that for the breach. Okay, I'll well, just that leave makes that you right. wonder. I'll just that leave makes that you right. So, hmm. um, because I, I, reading all what? the news reports. On this, I haven't seen any suggestion that she was subsequently punished for that. Well, I mean, and this, if if they were doing, if the journalists were doing real journalism, this is what they would be hashing out. They would mm -hmm. be hashing out all the details we're hashing out. That's right. And like you said, Nat, you're wondering why is it why it's an issue, but and and they're you know they're they're able to push the you know these 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 popular politically correct feminist narratives like like you said robert believe all women like uh no you know that's what court's for it's 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 my side of the story your side of the story um we have is legal that, representation that? putting that on the table you know, I always and like then to, the jury decides in the end that's right i always like to make the point the police should neither believe nor disbelieve a complainant. If a complaint is made, the job of the police is to investigate it. If there's a case to answer, then they send it on to the prosecution and then the process proceeds from there. But uh, And that's where our system, one of the places our system is falling down at the moment, where there's pressure on the police in some countries to push these things through. Rob, right. Robert, can I ask you a question? I'm just going to talk to the right Rob here. Can, can I ask you a question? With... Um, with the timeline of late, did she go to the media before she went back to the federal police? Well, yeah, well, yes, because she's gone to the media at the point at which this has become public knowledge, and uh, it's unclear whether she's yet made a formal complaint to police. So I did hear some reference to Wednesday, which, of course, is today here in Australia. So it may be, it's unclear on what day. It may have been a couple of days ago or it may have been today, but it's Quite whatever is the case, it's quite recent. So absolutely, uh, the media has been involved in this uh, at least a couple of weeks before a formal complaint to police has been made. So the Australian Federal Police came into it. She said she didn't want to make a, a complaint because she felt mm. like her job was on the line. They mm. couldn't do anything about it. Then mm. two years later, she comes forward to the media, not the Federal Police, and say, hey, this is what's happened. Yes, exactly. That's right. So now, effectively, they're looking at investigating uh, a rape claim that uh, that occurred allegedly two years ago. Uh, there was no physical evidence gathered at the time because the complaint wasn't made. No, nobody it's raised it. His, it's his word. His word against her word. So uh, it'll be a it'll be an interesting test of our judicial system. I think that it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Now, for the, uh, I'm not sure if you both know, but it's come out in the last couple of days that he's actually gone into a hospital. Apparently, around about the time that the first that she first made the allegation public, uh, he, he was actually, I think he may be, may be a voluntary patient, uh, but he's actually gone into a hospital. Uh, so, and he's- Well, Reynolds, he's, Reynolds went into the hospital yesterday. Everybody's going yeah, to the hospital. That's right. That's right, exactly, yeah, that's right. So I'm not sure clear that he even knows that the other well, allegations- I mean, they would, they would be stressed out of their minds. I mean, it, yeah. it's, this, this sounds like a shitstorm of, you know, epic proportions in terms of how it's yep. being pitched and how it's being played out. That's right. You know, and exactly. it's, I mean, you got to look at the timing as well. I mean, the, the Australian of the year, that Grace Tame, 
uh, you know, she, for her sexual assault, um, she did some, some fighting in Tasmania so that um, perpetrators' names could be put in the newspaper or something. Um, but anyway, That's she got, right. you know, so I mean, it's, 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 well. It's out actually, there. It, was victims names. it was actually victims' names. Um, so I believe the the problem was that she wanted to go public, but the law actually prohibited her from uh, going public okay. as a victim. So she I'm campaigned to, to to basically allow uh, the victims to uh, tell their story. Exactly, that's right. Yeah. So, and I think that 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 um, you know, I think that's quite reasonable. Uh, whether or not she should have got Australia for the year for it, I'm not sure. But I think probably <laughs> allowing people to come out and speak about their own story seems a reasonable thing to do. So, well, it um, tells you who it tells you who's calling the shots on the nomination committee. Yes, exactly. That's right. And they're, so, they're certainly not voting for Bettina Aunt, <laughs> especially after the firestorm from poor Bettina last year. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I felt so, I felt so bad for Bettina. Same, exactly. That's right. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's its such a, you know, a, it just seems so opportunistic. I mean, you know, I've, I've been watching a lot of different news sources for a lot of years, you know, from the left to the right. And, 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 and most of Australia's media, unless it's Sky News, is, you know, ABC, SBS, it, you know, it's 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 bent to the left, if not the far left. And I mean, and yeah. and a lot of these a lot of these talking heads are, are women. A lot of people they're talking to are women. So you're just getting a a, a very leftist uh, mm. female perspective breaking down this issue. And and I don't I don't see them actually teasing out the the facts. It's like, well, what do we actually know? That's what we can talk about in, in a court. You know, a lot of the stuff she's saying isn't going to hold water. And, and that's to me, that's that's the. That 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 takes their credibility down significantly. Yes. Well, as I said before, it's going to be I'm not saying I'm not saying this girl, I'm not. I'm not saying this girl wasn't raped. If she was, that's that's the worst thing that can happen. And like I said, this guy needs to 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 lose his testicles. But you know, if 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 it was some kind of sloppy drunk consensual office thing that um, that she ended up regretting the next day or down the track, and then thought, well, you know, it's not worth pushing with the police. Because she had several opportunities in the beginning to say, "Hey, this went down," and she didn't take them. Yeah, and she can and make excuses make... until she's, you know, until she's blown in the face as to why she didn't. But who, you and know, make... who knows what's in her head? Yeah. So I want to make clear. I, I've got the the same position that uh, I have no opinion on whether on whether an offence was committed or not. My view is just that there's insufficient evidence to prove it at this point because exactly. there was an opportunity to, to get the evidence and that opportunity was, if, if there was an offence there, that was missed. And now two years down the road, uh, she can open a complaint with the police uh, if it proceeds at all, uh, based just on what's public knowledge. If it proceeds based on what's public knowledge, I'd really have to question the independence because there just doesn't seem to be enough. There's a, there's a standard that's supposed to be met to even, to even put a matter exactly. before courts. Uh, they said they call it a reasonable prospect of conviction, and I just don't see how they can meet that standard uh, with with the with, given that there's no physical evidence and that a complaint is made two years later. And if it does go before the courts and there's a trial, and if there's a conviction, I think that would say a lot about the Australian judicial system today. Hmm. I think uh, I think yeah, I agree with everything you just said. And they're using it as a sledgehammer at this stage. Yeah. <laughs> to to pound the liberals because absolutely, it's very you know, absolutely. that's they're, right. They're pro labor. They're pro labor. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, right. and 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 if you if you hear, you would never hear anybody say that on the news. It's like okay, yeah. this is a political. They're just you know making political hay out of it, and mm. because because it's such a touchy subject, because everybody just the 
when you hear the word rape, the, you know, the air in the room just gets sucked out. Um, and nobody wants to touch it with a 10 foot pole and nobody wants to comment on it because it's so, it's so charged. Yeah. But Tina has made the point that she, she made this at, at uh, I think I first heard it. No, I probably first heard her say it before I see my 17, but she made the point that um, the ABC is in breach of its charter because it is actually required to be independent. And I, and I think that's such a good point. <laughs> Four years later on, later, after still the case, been probably been the case for many years, uh, and, and it seems like nobody in government is willing to do anything about it, not the left nor the right. Well, you know, I don't know why Morrison hasn't, hasn't taken his position and used some leverage to, to, to put some conservative voices into the age, into the, into the company. I mean, uh, it, it boggles my mind. Yeah. I remember. I, I just, I mean, I just get, I get sick of hearing the liberal perspective all the time. Like, come on guys, balance the equation a bit. Mm. I remember when the ABC was independent, when it was well, fairly independent, um, when I was younger, it was actually a pretty good agency and I was quite happy to have my taxes pay for it. But today, I would actually <laughs> would like to see it privatized because I'm, I, I, if they're going to be so biased, then uh, then um, now I will have a I will offer a caveat in a moment about that. But but there, there is a serious bias in there. I was just going to say um, I've been interviewed by ABC a few times, and I have to say there's been a sort of a range of opinions across there. Uh, there's a lady who interviewed me 2017 from ABC Radio in Brisbane. Um, oh, yeah. I think she was she was she was probably a bit uh, she probably wasn't. Uh, when she brought me on, I don't think she really sort of thought I was going to have much substantive to say. But to her credit, the lady's name escapes me now, unfortunately. But to her credit, she listened to what I had to say. She took it on board. She called experts that backed up what I said, and she put it on her show. Uh, so, wow. you know, credit to her. But so there's a variation. You know, not everybody's as bad as everybody else in the ABC. But certainly there's some, there's some serious problems in there. Though. So I will offer that caveat. Well, I'm talking I, about who you who you see on the on the channel on the TV, yeah, on the yeah. prime time news network. Um, Sorry, I, Hanley, wanna, I want to hear. I want to hear what yeah. you were going to no, say. No, I was going to just to back up, Rob. Um, I know the particular episode he's talking about on the ABC radio in Brisbane. It's on YouTube. I'll put it in the link down below. Great. I also wanted to say one other thing, and this is a rare occasion in which I'm going to congratulate the media on something. So listen carefully because you won't hear me say this very often. Uh, they have decided not to publish, publish his name. And I, and I really think that is actually admirable because they could have published his name and potentially destroyed him before he's ever gone to court. Uh, they've elected not to do so. I think that's fabulous. So uh, that's a rare occasion, perhaps, of the Australian media showing, uh, showing some responsibility. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Probably more <laughs> that uh, Jeffrey Jeffrey Rush won his case <laughs> and okay. cleaned somebody's clean somebody's. He's cloud, not a celebrity, as they say yep. in Texas. What's that? I think you're probably right. He's not a celebrity. So, like the the man that's been you know accused of this rape, he's not a celebrity. So, of course, his name's not going to be released. Like a couple of weeks ago, we actually talked about false allegations and it was Sasha Mitchell, an American um, who was a, who still acts but was a, in a popular family sitcom back in the 90s called Step by Step and I actually mentioned that he lost his job. Because, and, I heard, and this was before internet and I heard it back then that he lost his job because he was accused of beating up his wife. But mm. I found out years later, and I'm talking about as far as last year, that it, it is correct. He didn't beat her up. What it was is that she was a drug addict and used to attack him and the children, and it was him pushing her back and grabbing her and, like, because he was a, because he's a martial arts expert, he did actually leave bruises, <clears throat> and so he he went to jail for thirty days, and he was allowed to out on day release because he apparently broke the ABO. 
and he was out on day release to be able to continue doing this show. And then it happened again and he wasn't allowed out on day release and that's when he lost his job. But with this problem with the ex-wife is he had four children with her in the custody of all the four kids and raised them all by himself and she was only allowed to see him so many times in a year with supervised visits. Mm -hmm. So wow. the, the media... This is me thinking back then in the early mid nineties that this guy is, you know, is a white basher. And it wasn't until last year where I watched some stupid movie and looked it up on IMBD and just looked up his details in the trivia part where I found out the truth. But the truth's wow. never been released. It was just. Back then, he was a white basher, the, but the truth never gets released. That's so he got, he got canceled. He got canceled before cancel was a thing. Yeah, and yeah. he was by the time I think the show, the show knew, and the all of his co-stars knew, but and he was allowed back for the last episode of Step by Step. But Sasha Mitchell, look him up. He does, I cannot find. And any part where he's talking about it, except for this one part on IMBD where he spoke to Entertainment Tonight, and it's in a snippet like this big. But right. he's now <clears throat> he's now like big, strong muscle man. You know, he's still <laughs> in in the martial arts world. He he is more famous than his movies, but he's still acting today. He's I just always thought he was this wife basher which turned out to be yeah, right. false. But if you throw shit at someone, and this is where I'm, I'm backing up, Robert, if you throw shit at someone, it sticks. Whether it's real or not, it sticks. So where, if they release this guy's name, whether if it didn't happen, he's always going to be known as the rapist yeah. because he's not famous. And Sasha's famous. And it still didn't get released that he was innocent. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that would make a good article, actually. I might look at doing an article on that, actually, just to sort of get some publicity on that, uh, on the gentleman. Yeah, Sash, I'm try I've tried to... So um, you don't Senate reckon this guy's and... name's going to be leaked, that they're teeing it up? That, that <sighs> That's a good idea. leakage. Uh would be leaked. Who knows? I hope not. I really hope not. Um, I officially, hope it's yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah, if they, if the media, if, if at least if it stays out of the mainstream media, that can keep it, uh, keep it, keep it uh, sort of down down low. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope his name stays private. Uh, but I mean, I mean you know, I mean, the more, the more, the more I've heard about this guy, you know, I'm just like, I mean, if because he's got what four people uh, claiming either sexual assault or inappropriate. That's right. Uh, harassment behavior. Mm. I mean, he's an idiot. But it's sexual, sexual harassment is so it's like you do. great no, now. I mean, a I'm couple, a couple like of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that, I'm talking about the fourth one that came forward most recently. She touched it. He touched her leg wrong, according yeah. to her. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's, this is, it's, it's, uh, exactly. it's such a gray area now. It's not the yeah. hand down the top or the hand up the skirt. It's a, you look nice today, or I like your hair today, or I like that outfit on you. So, uh, it's sexual assault. Increasing number of countries uh, unwanted kissing is sexual assault too. So, and I found examples of that from Australia and Canada, uh, in, as well as other countries where, uh, where, where yeah. kissing someone without their consent can actually be sexual assault, which when you consider that the risks associated with that, like ending up on a sexual register, on a register uh, yeah. for an unwanted kiss, uh, Man, yeah. it is fraud. No exactly. wonder, you That's know, I mean, I, the, these young guys, they don't stand a chance. And I mean, they're going to use, they're going to use this to push, you know, the, the Australian of the year award, the, the Grace Tame story, the, this story. Um, what's her, what's her first name? Higgins. Uh, Brittany. What's Higgins? For Brittany. Brittany Higgins. Yeah. You know, the, these, these consents, 
uh, compulsory consent courses, you know, for third graders are going to start showing up in schools. It's, it's common. Yeah, that's right. It's more make work. More, you know, and right. I don't, I don't have a problem with conversations around consent mm. in terms of, you know, teaching people how to navigate uh, sexual territory. I mean, uh, you know, everybody needs to learn that, but mostly people learn it by, you know, fumbling around and, and, uh, you know, and generally there's alcohol involved, you know, teenage, teenage years and, you know, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a really, yeah, it's, it's, it's scary. It's a much more risky situation, especially for young men today than it was even in my time, which was, you could say it was a generation ago. Um, it's a very different situation and I, and I do do worry for them. And as I've always said, I'm doing this for the next generation of men and men and women because the women are not going to be better off uh, with the with what's going on with the men. So whether it's because the the men are going to uh, disengage, they are disengaging, they're going to continue to disengage. They're going to be, in many cases, in a growing number of cases, they're quite literally staying away from women because they're afraid of them. Uh, the women will not be better off in a world where men have failed. I mean, it's not doing women any favors. You know, you turn on the TV. I mean, it, it's men and women, but it's most, a lot. you know, there's a big focus on, on women at the moment. You know, every mm. channel you turn to, I'm a channel surfer. It's just, you know, women's victim stories. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, they're being celebrated. And it's like, yeah, okay, you know, bad stuff happened to you. Sorry, you know, join the human race. Bad stuff happens to everybody. And I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not taking the piss out of your suffering, but I'm just saying there's a lot more to you than your suffering. And, That's right. and, and I think, I think women, are being done a disservice when the equation is not balanced by success stories. It's like, hey, you know, I want to hear what inspires you. I want to hear about your wins. I want to hear about what you have achieved. And I want to hear, I want to hear guys' stories too. And guys That's are being right. drowned out in the media. Yep. They're being drowned out in the popular culture um, just because they're guys. And, so, and, and, I mean, I was just going to say, we, we hear this constantly, of course, but one in particular example that I think was just so clear, uh, three, three years ago, 2018, uh, if you watch the BBC, you kept hearing that it was 100 years since women had the vote in the UK. So in actual fact, 2018 was 100 years since the universal male franchise in the UK, not universal female, female franchise. That's 2028. So you wait, in 2028, they'll be saying it again, 100 years since female franchise, universal female franchise. <laughs> so every 10 years. Blame, <laughs> yeah, they stop blame of the men's one. 2018 was 100 years from universal male franchise in the UK, and the BBC just didn't say it. They, That's they where all saying, men could vote, not just the, the, exactly. the upper upper aristocrat types. Exactly. I mean, a bit off the topic of what we were talking about tonight, but... Uh, in the UK at the time, uh, estimated around about uh, maybe about two thirds of men could vote before they had finally emancipated them all and given them all a vote, but uh, franchise them all, I should say. But um, pro a long t centuries ago, it had all been based on property ownership, and they found uh, that they found women among the voter rolls. So they found that they knew it had, they'd wondered for a long time whether it was true, and then the voter rolls turned up, and they found that women who owned property were voting before most men. And a right. few years ago, yeah, a few years ago, they even found one where they'd assumed that when it was women voting, they were mostly aristocrats. And they actually found a voter roll that had a couple of aristocrat, aristocratic women, some middle class women, and a maid. And the maid owned a, land, a block of land, so she, so she got to vote. <laughs> she was a so maid. Basically, land, land ownership that determined. Yeah, exactly. But That's I mean, right. I mean, I'm interested to hear from you, Nat, about, you know, just in terms of what, what this what this is your 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 sense of what what what's happening in the popular culture i mean am i the only one that's just seeing women you know share their victim story after victim story i mean is that just me no. or is that no i <clears throat> i um about seven years ago i went through about 18 months of hell like literally 18 months of hell. 
to the point where it, it, I, it wasn't that I just couldn't leave my house. It took me, took energy for me, for me to just get out of bed every day. Um, and I will put this out there because of, because I wasn't working, obviously. I, I, it was just, it was just disgusting hell for me. And um, so I lost my house. I lost all my furniture. I was essentially homeless. My sister took me in, got me a new place. And she didn't push me mentally because I was in a bad place. She right. should give me yeah. like little touches every now and again, but she didn't push me until I was ready. And then I she would drop her dog off to me in the morning. So it, that would get me out of the house because I had to take the dog for a walk. So it was just like baby steps. And it wasn't until I moved into this place here that I fully came into light. So I, I've got a great job. I love my job. I love my friends. Um, I love the people I work with. I'm actually really lucky. Um, but it wasn't until I moved into here that I... I fully stepped out of that dark place. I, f I stepped into the light because I it's my house, it's my name, it's my money. I saved up for it. it. It was just such a, I did it. That's what I celebrate. Because I was in such a dark place, I'd rather celebrate the fact that I'm out of it hmm. than talk about what happened for me to be in it. Right. Just say, yeah, I've been there. I've, I've been through shit. I've, I, if if I told you the the catalyst of what put me into that dark state, nobody believes me. Even when it happened, people said, no, it didn't happen that way. Right. And it, I am not a victim. I'll never be a victim. What's happened to me in that 18-month period um, things happened that were, were just life. I was never a victim. Hmm. But I got myself out of it, a couple of pushes from friends and family, but I dug myself out of that hole. Nice. And I came into the light myself. And my mum would be proud of me, my sister's proud of me, my son's proud of me. But I'm proud of me, and that I'll draw this. As I said, I'll draw the celebrate me being at me being happy, and me telling people what I've done to get where I am to be happy, than dwell on what happened and that be the catalyst. No, the catalyst is here, where I am now. I'm. I couldn't have done this two years ago. When, when I when I did the radio show last year with Marie, I I was vomiting the first time I did it. Oh, and I was I was at work and I was like this, and the boss was saying you got to calm down. Yeah, I I couldn't have done this two years ago, and now it's like I've this is something I truly believe in. This is something I've yeah, and this is something to celebrate for me. Um, yeah, you're right. P women do play the victim card way too much. Where well, I'm never going to play the victim card. I'm going to play the cel you know, let's celebrate life card. And society and encourages women to do it too, and that's the really unfortunate thing. It's constantly yeah. casting onto them, you are a victim, and that's uh, Western similar culture is doing that now. And it's, I think it's very damaging for women, to be honest. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I'm observing, and I, you know, I applaud you, Natalie, because it's it's it sounds like you had a really rough patch there, and and you you had some some you know some key kind of characters that um, supported you, and then you got got up on your feet again, and then you got your momentum happening, and yeah. you started a whole new chapter. My, my sister, and, it was her birthday that's, yesterday. That's, that's, that's the rest of the story that I want to hear, you know, mm. but they yeah. just stop it. I've just had such a hard life. And, that you know, they're walking out of the interview with a Gucci bag and high heels. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I can point at people who probably had a harder life than you. 
yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but I mean, but it, but it's not, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, the uh, making a contest out of it. I'm just saying, you know, everybody, you know, you don't get through. I mean, I, I've been a counselor 15 years and I haven't met, you know, I've talked to two to three thousand, you know, individuals as clients. And, you know, I haven't heard the first story is, you know, I got I got out scot free. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I have had no suffering. I've had no hard time. I haven't hit rock. You know, everybody everybody's going through this. And I think to to put the emphasis on on getting your victim story right and making it airtight so that you can cancel you know, someone or you can take somebody down with it or you can make some kind of political statement. Um, you know, it, it's it's sending the wrong, the, the very, you know, it's sending very um, destructive messages to, to, to young women. Yeah, absolutely. In my opinion. So you know, Brittany, back- Brittany, Brittany Higgins had, she had several opportunities and it sounds like she was encouraged by uh senior staff to to you know to 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 at least you know talk to the police about this thing and 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 she did she chose not to as an adult woman regardless of the excuse she gives well i was afraid i was going to lose my job so what who cares you're you're a grown up uh if if this was if this happened to you and you wanted uh you wanted justice then there's a course of action you have to take and you didn't take it yes uh Brittany higgins was actually quoted recently in the media and uh, saying uh, i want justice but uh, in order to get justice she would have had to have started by making a complaint to the police exactly yeah well, we've actually happens. just we've tipped over just over an hour so i don't know if anyone's got any final parting thoughts before we finish up I think th- I think that one was mine. <laughs> I think, well done. I think that, I think that summarised it well. Um, I was just thinking, why don't we get you on the show another time? That'd be awesome. I'd love that. Wonderful. Great. Thanks so much for coming on, Rob. Yeah, you guys are fun. I really enjoyed <laughs> that. Yeah, it's been yeah, great. Thanks this very is much. beautiful. What I'm going to try and do now. Before we go, I'm going to try and something new. Um, mm-hmm. So this goes on to YouTube as well. So click the like button, subscribe. It goes onto my channel and Rob's, and okay. let's have some, yeah, let's have some fun with this. Yep. And, and get it out. I promise I'll have my technology <laughs> more sorted. <laughs> we we uh, want to get this sample. out there. It's not for us to be popular. We we want to get voices heard, That's and right. as a female, I want to I want to be heard. And I want to listen to the guy's point point of view, and I think this is where this is how we start. So, like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever is happening down here or down here, click it. Do it. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye bye. Take care. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs>